I'll turn it on for you when we get through. Good morning to everybody. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in Sunday school today. Be sure and get a bullet. And there's a lot of announcements in it. I just want to welcome you to Newtown Baptist Church. If you're one of our guests today, we're thankful that you've come to worship with us. And I pray you'll be blessed. If you are a guest, if you'll look in the back of your pew, you'll find a guest card. If you'll fill that out, put it in an offering plate as you exit the building today. Thank you for coming. I wonder, do we have any first-time visitors today, first-time people at Newtown? We got any? I'm looking. All right. If you're a guest and you've been here before, raise your hand. Well, God bless you. I'm glad you're here. Let me just read this uh, card. We have a card that says, My church family has always meant so much, but just in the last weeks of Chuck's illness and home going, we felt so much love and compassion. And it's for Miss Marie. Please continue to pray for them that God would be with them. Don't forget the announcements in the bulletin. Tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock, is care ministry. If you can come, make phone calls, write cards, make visits, whatever you can do, please come. We'd appreciate it. Also, I guess as little as we like to think of it, school's about to start back in a few weeks. And each year we have school partners. If you're a student in college or in high school or in grade school, You'll find these sheets down here at the front. You'll take one, fill it out, just uh, fill out the top part and put it in this basket right over here. And then your prayer partner will draw that out. They'll fill out the bottom part and give it to you. And you'll be prayed for each day. So don't forget to do this. And we'll have a special back to school day. Also, I'd like to mention on August the 1st, we're starting our kids' ministry back. We'll be serving a meal at 515, service at 6. We need more volunteers. If you'd help us, we'd appreciate it so very, very much. Also, we ask you to remember in prayer those that are sick, those that have had death in their families. We express our prayers and sympathy to Matt Hilberts and family. In the passion of his aunt, Miss Betty Dilbeck, and to Polly Scott and family in the passing of her sister, Betty Jean Walraven. That funeral will be today at uh, Thomas Funeral Home. Remember to pray. This was also the sister of Burl Wilson. So please pray for this family. Remember to pray for those prayer requests that are on the back of your bulletin. Miss Maxine Clements. Had surgery this week. Everything went well. Uh, Melinda Duval is home now, but she certainly needs our prayers. And uh, continue to pray for Brother Darrell Sutherland, that God would touch him. Miss Jean Holden will be having uh, surgery soon. Miss Dorothy Closen has been very sick. Pray for her. Louis Bradley is in the hospital. Uh, continue to pray for all these prayer requests. We're going to have a word of prayer at this time and remember these prayer requests. How many of you have an unspoken request today? God knows our needs, and I'm grateful that he does. Would you stand with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, God, that you've loved us, you've cared for us, you've provided for us, you've taken care of us. Thank you, God, that we live still in the land of America, the land and the home of the brave and the free. And God, I pray today, Lord, that you'll just help us to worship you with grateful hearts and give the goodness of our soul to you. Father, I pray today for these prayer requests. I pray for these families who have had death in their family this week and funerals. God be with them. Lord, I pray that uh, for those that are sick, 
for those that are in the hospital, for those that are recovering from hospital stays, God be with them. Lord, I pray today for this service. May your name be magnified. May it be glorified. And I pray if there's one person in this room that doesn't know Jesus, this be the day they come to him. I pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, touch hearts and lives. Somebody may need to join the church today. They have been baptized. They need to be baptized. I pray, God, they'll follow your leadership. Now, God, bless this music. Bless every person that participates, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, all right, we're going to sing a song that I pray that everybody can sing out of your heart. I know I'm saved. challenged us to do that for a week a couple of weeks ago you know if revival comes it's got to come from God right but also if it comes it's got to start with me and you individually and don't we we need to open our hearts up to revival the psalmist said oh clap your hands some of you were clapping all you people shout unto God with a voice of triumph God has gone up with a shout the Lord with the shout of the trumpet. He's coming back that way too, according to 1 Thessalonians. You can be seated. Keep singing it with us. Shout to the Lord this morning.
number one in your choir booth. Let's stand up and testify. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. From these eyes that now, now can see, deprive me of the food I eat, and even.
and my feet. But as long as I have Jesus, then I can still go free. That I, I could, could still go free. What kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me? Oh, unworthy to live and not fit to kill. Was a man on the cross Put me in his will And said that I could still go free I never could quite understand why a king would want to leave his throne to don the robe of an earthly man and feel the pain of flesh, flesh and bone. But he later trod, he trod that lonely path that led to Calvary. You know those blood red stains, they broke all the chains that I that I, I could still go free. What kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me? to live and not fit to kill was a man on the cross put me in his will and said that I could still go free then the man on the cross grateful you're free today if the sun shall make you free you're free indeed and what a joy to know and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus is your savior you can know him I pray that any time in this service that you want to come forward we'll always take time to lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ because that's our mission that's our purpose Thank you, Quartet, for singing that song today. We needed that, and I'm grateful that we're free, free indeed. Thank God today. If you have your copy of the Word of God, 
I want you to turn with me today. Uh, I'm going to be reading from two passages of Scripture. The first one is found in Matthew chapter 28, and uh, beginning with verse number 18. The second one is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. As I prayed this week and I listened to the young man who brought the message on Wednesday evening, my heart was stirred as he preached about the Apostle Paul, how that God delivered him. He was shipwrecked. They could have all been drowned, but God saw fit to set him free by the grace of God. And I thought about this. Many times in life, we feel shipwrecked. We feel that we got got to quit. We've got to give it up. But I want to tell you, it's too soon to quit. It, it is too soon. Many people during the pandemic have just quit church. They've got out of church. They've never been back. I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot give up. We cannot stop. We cannot quit. You know, we're going to make it to the end of the journey by the grace of God. And that's where I want you to be. I want to see you when we finish the course, when the race is run, when everything is all done and Jesus says, come on home, I, wanted to, I want him to look at us and say, you didn't give up. You didn't quit. You stayed in there for the glory of God. As we read the sermon text today, if you will stand in honor to the reading of God's Word. Matthew 28 uh, is our first portion, beginning with verse number uh, 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now look at this last part. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of of the world. Could I get an amen to that? Amen. Then over in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, listen, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Father, I pray that you'll bless your word to our hearts. Thank you today for the reading of God's word. Thank you, God, for your eternal word that we have, that we have a full copy of the word of God, and that we can trust the word of God because it's, because it's been written as holy men of old were moved upon by the Spirit of God. Father, I pray now you'll use me, your servant, me today to speak the words of truth. I pray today that I'll speak to the hearts of every person in this room today. God, to that person that doesn't know Jesus, that's not free, I pray this be the day they'll come to you. To that person that's been saved and they've wandered away, I pray they'll come all the way back. To that person that needs to unite with the church, to follow the Lord in believers' baptism, I pray, God, that you'll speak to their heart today. Now, God, again, I dedicate myself to you. I pray for physical strength. I pray for mental ability. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God upon me. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, thank you, and you can be seated. All of us have times in our life when we feel like quitting and giving up. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like, I can't go any farther? I can't uh, make it anymore. All of us have burdens, and they can get to us. Preachers have them. Laymen have them. Everybody has those times. When I study the Word of God, and I could not tell you 
how many times I've read through from Genesis to Revelation the Word of God. But I find in reading the Word of God that some of the greatest men that God had in the Word of God, there were times when they felt like quitting. They felt like giving up. I remember reading about Elijah, the prophet of God. And uh, he said, Lord, he said, Jezebel is after me. I just want to quit. Let me die. But God didn't do it. And I read about uh, men like Jeremiah that was cast into prison and uh, for his word from God because he testified about what God had said. I read about men like Job who was stricken from the top of his head to the soles of his feet with balls, and he wanted to quit. He wanted to give up. But he said, though God slay me, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to keep on trusting God. Now, in the Word of God, in the New Testament, I read about the Apostle Paul, probably one of the greatest in the New Testament, uh, that authored more books than anybody else in the New Testament. Paul experienced uh, similar emotions in his life from time to time. He was beaten. He was thrown in prison. Uh, a, he, uh, when he wrote the book of, of Corinthians, he was probably going through some time of depression and despair. But in 1 Corinthians 2 and 3, he mentions weakness. He mentions fear. He mentions trembling. But he said, I'm far from strong. I'm nervous. He said, I'm rather shaky. We've all been there sometime or another in our life. And if you haven't been there, you're going to be there because we're human. We're human beings. All of us have had the time when things seem to be down in our life. There are some reasons that they happen. It can happen in your life. Sometimes we feel down. We get fatigued. We get tired. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, out there trying to do the will of God. And we're pressed in our spirit. The Word of God uses this term. Paul was bound in his spirit. His physical body was torn, worn. And it can affect your emotions and it can affect your spirit. Now, I believe this. I believe God intends for us sometime in our life to take a day of rest. I believe you ought to have one day every week that you take a day of rest. Listen, God didn't make you. God didn't make you to go wide open seven days a week. God didn't do it. The Word of God said that when God, God Himself, created this world, when God created all of creation, the Word of God said He rested. He took a day off. I believe that you ought to do that. I believe it will help you. And I need to listen to myself preach this morning. Amen. I need to listen to that. Sometimes I just feel like I've got to keep my uh, nose to the wheel. I've just got to stay in there. I've got to be there. Our people are not going to think I'm a good pastor. I want to tell you, I'm not going to give an account to people. I'm going to give an account to God one day. And it's if I'm obedient to God, you can feel down. Sometimes you can feel defeat. You, you know that the child of God is never defeated. But I'm here to tell you today that sometimes you can defeat. Spirit is hurt. And uh, because you tried to do right and somebody misjudged you I believe every preacher of the gospel feels this way sometime I remember when I pastored in another area I was sitting in my office one day and somebody knocked on my door and a preacher friend opened the door he just said I just wanted to see a friendly face and sometime you need that sometime you just need a smile Sometime you just need a good warm handshake. Sometime you just need a word of encouragement. You can feel down. You can feel defeat. You can feel di disappointed. You can feel disappointed in when you try to do your best, when you try to give your best, and it doesn't happen. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't mean that God 
is not still on the throne. It doesn't mean that God is not still your Father, and Jesus is your Savior, and the Holy Spirit is your Comforter. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, even in your disappointment, your defeat, when you're down, God's still on the throne. And I want to encourage you today to lift up your head, lift up your heart, because as a quartet sang a while ago, you're free by the grace of God. You've been saved by God's marvelous grace. Now, also, in spite of us being down and defeated and disappointed, you know, we can have success in our life, and that can become a dangerous time. If we don't give God the glory and God the praise for everything that we do, I want to tell you, we're, we're missing it. We're missing. So don't let your success become a falter and a fear to you. And when you need God the most, as he did the Apostle Paul, I read the Word of God in Acts 28. I believe it's, no, it's Acts 18. Excuse me. When Paul needed him the most, the Lord stood by him in the middle of the night, and he came to him in a vision. And he said this, Paul. He said, don't be afraid. Speak and hold not your peace. You know, isn't it good that standing somewhere in the shadows, Jesus is there. He's always there. He was saying, Paul, you can't give up. You can't quit. Trying times are not the times to quit. Pandemic times are not the times to quit coming to church. Pandemic time is not the time to give up your office in the church. But it's a time to get in there closer to God because brighter and better days are coming. Thank God the best is yet to come. Aren't you glad God's got better things out there in the future? It's too soon to quit, too soon to give up. Let me give you three little simple things that I believe will encourage you today to hang in there. Number one, it is too soon to quit because the promise of God's presence. Did you notice in our text today, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Then in our text, our other text, he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. What more do we need? What more do we want? Then God is with us. I don't care how cold, I don't care how indifferent you get, God is with you. You don't have to pray, God be with me. He is with you because he's your Savior. Now, he said, lo, I am with you. The personal promise of God's presence. Do you know that this promise applies to every child of God? If you're saved by the grace of God, that's your promise. God has given you that. Are you listening? God has given you that promise. Because you're God's child. One of the times of Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus gave us these words, Lo, I am with thee always, even till the end of the age. He said, I'm going to be there. I was there when you opened your heart and you gave it to me and you were saved by the grace of God. He said, I'm going to be with you till I come again and take you, and then we're going to be together forever. Listen, make this a personal testimony to your heart. I am with you. I'm going to make it personal to me. I am with you, Walter Hare, because God said he was. God said he was there. Paul said again and again in his writings, he said, all men have forsaken me. But he said, God stood with me and strengthened me. Let me tell you, your Lord will never walk away from you. He's going to be there every minute of every day. Listen to what the Word of God said in uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter number 49, verse number 14. But Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. 
Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, but I will not forget. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Think about that. Your name is in the palm of the hand of God Almighty. Not only is it there, it's in the Lamb's book of life. And not only that, it's sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. What more could we ask than that to encourage our heart? Hebrews 13 and 5 said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's the personal promise of God's presence. Then there's the powerful promise of God's presence. Powerful in any situation of life, high or low. You're still God's child. God didn't save you to keep you on the mountain all the time. But lo, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. God is right there. Sometime his power is more keenly experienced in the valley than it is any other time. It's powerful in life. It's powerful in death. Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. The Word of God said that when Jesus came to his friend's house that day, to Mary and Martha, their brother had been laid in the tomb, and their heart was grieved and broken. And Jesus said, He's not dead. He's alive. I love that song that says, He may be three days late, but He's always right on time. Aren't you glad He always comes to us just when we need Him? No wonder the songwriter wrote a song that said, When I come to the river at ending of day, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Listen to me. His powerful promise is God's presence will be with you. Then not only is there the promise of God's presence, there's the promise of God's protection. Lo, I am with you unto the end of the age. Now, Paul didn't say you're not, or Jesus didn't say you're not going to have any problems. He didn't say you're not going to have any opposition. He didn't say you're not going to have any physical mistreatment. The Word of God teaches us the men of God in the Word of God had plenty of this. But God said, I'm going to give you the promise of my protection. Let me tell you something. Get this. If you don't get anything else, the saint of God is an immortal until God gets finished with him. God's going to take you every step of the way. I've watched our members some of them pass away. I've been there when they drew their last breath. I was there just before they drew their last breath. And I felt the presence of God in their room. The power of life and death is not in the hands of this world. It's in the hands of the resurrected Lord who's got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And if he's got the keys, he's my savior. He's my master. He's my caretaker. He's going to take care of me. And why should I worry? I want to tell you, I've got the promise of God's protection. Praise his name. And he's going to take care of me. Aren't you glad we have a savior like that? Amen. Aren't you glad that it's in his hands? Nothing can harm you. If that's what God wills, God's going to take care of you. He's above us by his cloud of glory. He's beneath us by his everlasting arms. He's before us as our guide. He's behind us as our guard. We're protected in the divine will of God. You can't quit now because of the promise of God's protection. There's one other thing that I want to mention. We can't give up. We can't quit now because of the promise of God's potential. What is God saying to us? Go therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. What do we need? How do we need to look at the situation we face today? It don't look too promising. The things that are going on in our nation, our country, when people uphold communism, when people uphold liberalism, when people uphold things that we know the Word of God says are not right, when people put it there, and say, we're going to do this because it's our own choice. We're going to do what we want to do. When people do that, do we quit? No, we look at it through the eyes of God. Now, when you look around, you'll see evil. You'll see idolatry. People in the shackles of sin. People controlled by the power of Satan. You know, I'm sure that many times when those men of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament looked at the situation, it looked impossible. When Jonah refused to follow God's plan and he was swallowed by the great fish, then when he got out of there, he hit the ground running and he preached repentance It looked like an impossible situation, but the whole country, the whole city turned to God. Now, I don't know if we're going to see a worldwide revival in these last days, but I know this, God is able to revive every individual and every individual church that will come to Him and walk His way. God will do it, ladies and gentlemen. God will do it. That's the promise of the potential of God. God sees beneath the surface. We only see the outside. God sees the sin and the shame. God sees the rebellion, but He also sees hearts that need Him, hearts that are hungry, hearts that need the Savior. So we, we need to look through the eyes of God. Listen, God sees people who need something in their heart that they don't have. They're lost. God is saying, I know something of these people you don't know. God said, I created them. I made them. And God says, I divinely own it all. All the people in this world, God sees everything. God sees all the people, the potential around Newtown Baptist Church. Church, we've got to work. We've got a mission. When I look over this congregation and I see a few empty pews, that tells me we got a mission. we got a ministry. we got to take it out there for the glory of God. God's saying, don't give up. God's saying, don't quit praying. God's just saying, don't quit visiting. God is saying, don't quit coming to care ministry. God is saying, don't give up the highways and the hedges ministry program that we have in our church. You know what? Your prospect be the, may be the next one on God's list to save. Maybe you're praying for somebody lost. They may be the next one. Don't give up. Don't quit. God sees the end from the beginning. Now, remember this. God gives definite opportunity. God takes the most unlikely, unthought of, and He can do the miraculous. God can do it by His grace. That's the God we serve. If God can take a lump of clay and breathe it and make it like a man and breathe into its nostrils a breath of life, and it becomes a living soul and starts walking around, I want to tell you, God can do anything. Amen? God can do anything. God is saying, stay in there. Don't quit now. Keep on praying. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up on the lost. I'm going to keep on witnessing. You see, God wants them to be saved. 
It's God wants us to have the joy of winning them. He cares. He's maybe that person is one step in, away from Christ. They may not seem to care. Pray conviction on them. Pray and see God's face. How much do you care? Whatever it takes. I know people that are sitting at home today. People that are away from church. People that are out having a big time. They've given up. God doesn't give up. Thank God he does. He is our shepherd. You know, I heard a preacher this week tell a beautiful story. He said there were two men. One of them was an accomplished actor, and he could just do anything. Another was just a humble preacher. And they both stood in the same area, in the same group of people. And uh, the, the people wanted them to quote the 23rd Psalm. The actor stood up there, and he quoted it word for word. Oh, he put the emphasis where it ought to be. He knew how to illustrate it. He knew how to do it with his hands. Then they looked at the preacher and they said, you do it. This old country preacher said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And on and on he went. He didn't use perfect English. He didn't have perfect grammar. But when he got through, the whole congregation, there wasn't a dry eye in the congregation. The actor looked at the preacher. He said, I know the words, but you know the shepherd. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's the important thing. We know the shepherd. We know him. No matter what you're going through today, do you know the shepherd? I'm glad I know the shepherd. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He restores my soul. He gives me grace in the wilderness. He gives me strength when I feel like I can't make it. He's with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy, hallelujah, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I often say at funeral services that for the child of God, they just lose their breath here and catch it over there. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I thank God for the church, for God's people. And one of these days, I'm going up to big church. I'm going there by the grace of God. You can't quit now. Somebody in this room today, you felt like, what's the use? Why should I keep on teaching that class? Nobody's listening. The kids are climbing the wall. They're in the floor. They're everywhere. Keep telling them about Jesus. Keep telling them about Him. Some of you adult teachers may feel like, well, no, nothing's really accomplishing. My class isn't growing. It isn't doing. Are you giving the Word of God? Keep giving the Word of God. It's going to accomplish His purpose. My Word will not return void unto me. God's going to bring it to pass. It's too soon to quit, church. Amen. I used to sing a song when I was a kid that said, I've been traveling here in this life. I'm too near home to turn back now. And if you've made one step toward heaven, you've been saved one day by the grace of God. You're too near home to turn back now. May I encourage you today, stay in there. God answers prayer. God is our God. He's our heavenly Father. He's going to take care of his children. Maybe there's a young person here today that's down and discouraged. Maybe there's a young married couple. Maybe there's a, a father and mother with children. Maybe there's an older couple, a senior citizen. I want to tell you, don't give up. Hang in there.
And I believe there's people that just need to walk down this aisle today. Lay your burden on the Lord. He cares for you. If you're lost, you need to be saved. If you are out of fellowship with God, you need to get in fellowship with Him. If you've been saved and haven't been baptized, you need to give a testimony of baptism that I'm saved by the grace of God. Whatever your need is, you need to join the church. You come today. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Father, I pray today that I've encouraged somebody. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that that Christian, that Christian young person, that Christian boy or girl, and a woman, that Christian senior citizen, and they've just been down and they feel like it's no use and they may as well give up. God, I pray I've encouraged them. And I pray they'll just rededicate their life to God today. I pray this be the day, God, that somebody renews their spirit and their vow. And I pray for that one that's lost. God, I pray you'd save them today. For that one that needs to join the church, God, I just place it all in your hands. I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Whatever your need is, as the song is sung, don't hesitate. Don't wait. Don't be ashamed. Just get out of your seat. I'll pray with you. Somebody will pray with you. Come on. Bring it to the Lord today.